Okay, continuing with refined paint in digital, digital painting of my fox here. Now when I zoom in, I'm not as thrilled with, with the paint texture, with the surface texture, right? But I like the color combinations. I like what I'm starting to get. So what I'm going to do is lock my refined paint layer, move on top, and now I'm going to start zooming in and playing with maybe a different approach. I might try a different brush. There's a category called wet media brushes, which will be more similar to this. And that doesn't seem all that special, but I like, ah, I see it. You can see at the edge, these brushes soften out, which is pretty nice. Like that. Yeah, it's pretty good. So this might be a good one to play with at a lower opacity. And I'm going to zoom in, and I can zoom in on my reference as well. And I'm going to try to get kind of a finish that I'm happy with. There's a lot of interesting things going on with the layering. But now I want to try to see it at full resolution. So this is at 100%. I'm viewing it at 100%. So I'm seeing it as I would see a print. So let's see. Let's try... Try this color. I want to play with the opacity. There we go. So this is a wet brush. It has slightly different criteria to mess with. But I can still always play with brush settings. Shape dynamics, texture, transfer is what's used here and I can jitter that flow, the wetness jitter, the mix jitter. This is all pretty fun. And it will kind of smooth things as I go. So you see, as I use it, it kind of mixes the paint for me. can mix colors into different colors. And I can start to get a finish on that surface. So look how different that is. Now, ultimately, I think I want this final layer not to be fully opaque. But as I'm working on it, I can just play with the lower opacity brush. I'm going to bring some of these colors into other areas. Now this is a fun approach, and it might be a little too ambitious to finish within the time, but this helps me get a refined paint surface that I'm into. Just using a lot of option and stealing color, not so much from my references anymore, but just from myself. But if I need to, I always can steal them from the reference. So like framing in the highlight on the eye. Deciding how much I want. Where the edges should be kind of sloppier. Where they can be kind of blurred out. A lot of painting artists, digital painting artists, like to use the smudge tool. So this is, the wet brush is a lot like the smudge tool, except it actually creates a paint instead of just modifying what's already there. So you see it's all on its own layer right here. But you see how those look like wet brush strokes now. And it's very hard for a computer or AI to imitate unless it already has examples out there in the world. So you're coming up with your own approach here. Now this is where I can also use this wet brush, this mixer brush, 
and I can set it to sample from existing layers below. But I enjoy kind of choosing my own colors a lot more. And you just do that with the option key. So in the nose, I'm on the wrong layer. That's why it's nice to lock your layer so you don't make that mistake. Start painting over things you want to keep. But I might actually turn this layer down. So what should I call this? This is a finishing layer. But I'm going to turn my refined paint layer down just a little bit so I can see more of what's underneath it and lock that again. And now I'm just really trying to get more visual interest and complexity especially around the edges of these, especially where there wasn't a lot done before. And trying to view it at 100%. Don't ever go more than 200%. And I'm just using my option key to select colors, and then I'm using the space bar to move around. And I can do that with my reference as well. Which also allows me to steal colors. So I can use this to soften edges, mix between. Let's get a more satisfying finish. It's like blending with pastel or, or wet paint. That's why they're called wet brushes. And that soft finish on the edge helps it to blend with the other edges you have. So concept artists don't use this too much because they're all about speed. And these kind of finishing techniques are about the end product. And usually for printing. But you can see the big difference. There's my sketch still showing through. If I use these kind of refined brushes, I can get a much more satisfying treatment of that. Now sometimes I want that hard edge. 
if I just wanted to blur everything, I could just use Gaussian blur or different filters. It's nice just to kind of feel it out, find your own way. Now the problem is sometimes you can't get the brush to do exactly what you want. Like in this case, when I'm setting it to mix and it's doing a certain amount of a, a wet load with what's underneath, then I'm not able to make it as dark as I want, right? So I can always go back at the end and just use regular brushes to establish highlights and and shadows at the end, which is usually a pretty good idea. Now I could use this same technique to get like all of the different fur textures and things, and I've done that in past demos, but it's kind of nice to be free of that because I have a lot of that in the base painting layer. And instead I'm just playing with a different kind of finish. that I can be happy with. And why I like using the wet brush here is I don't, don't like it when everything just looks like a sponge painting at the end. So the smudge tool is right here. It's under the paint bucket tool. And the smudge tool will do similar things, right? It will just push the paint around and soften it. So sometimes I'll make a duplicate of my refined paint layer so that I can start smudging it in some areas, right? So it doesn't look so sponge painty. And this can be another tool that's helpful. Just as you're kind of pushing your edges, it's softening them. Put it up to 100% so you can see. Now this bunch tool takes a lot of processing. So that's where you want to save your work. But it's different than the blur tool because you can kind of push things in to different directions. Whereas the blur tool just takes the sharpness away. This kind of blends at the edge of where you're pushing. See that? And it might be interesting to do that on my um, base painting layer too. If there are areas I felt were too sharp. So we're getting close to a finish.